What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Old Volks TV. We're back in the shop today. It's a cold evening. I don't know why I give you guys the weather every time, but it's cold tonight. It got dark, it got cold. It was a nice day, but look out. Uh, we are back in here working on the bus again, trying to do some more upgrades for the trip to Havasu. Uh, buses by the bridge. I had planned on putting my big 2 liter fuel injected motor in here for some smooth sailing, um, but it's looking like that might not happen. Uh, so I have a plan B. Uh, I'm going to take this good 1600 that I got in here and I got these nice, beautiful Cadrones, Cadrons, Cadrons, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I got these, uh, I restored these a few years ago. I've just had them on my shelf in my collection. Um, but I went back through them and made sure the gaskets, everything was good, and, uh, and it was, so got the single port manifolds on there. Um, I've heard this is a really good setup. I've actually run this in the past. Um, dual CADs, single port 1600, uh, Protronics ignition in 09, ran really good. Uh, it was actually really strong in my Westie, which is basically the same bus as this, so I'm hoping this is good enough to get me there. If I can get the 2 liter going, we'll shoot another video of me stuffing that thing in here. Um, and that'll be that'll be the best, because uh, that's a giant motor. I'm really excited to drive that, but we're so close. But we're missing a few things. Uh, Mario and I are working that out. Uh, Mario from the dub shop. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter, because this will run just fine, I'm sure. So tonight we're just going to tear it down. Um, I do have all the parts except for the fuel line. I'm a little bit short on that, so I'm going to have to pick some of that up in the morning. But I have everything else we need. Um, I'll go through the parts list with you kind of before we get to tearing it apart. I'll show you everything you need to make the conversion. Um, it's actually not that bad, especially in a bus. In a bug, you don't want to do this in the car. You want to take everything, drop the motor, pull it apart, put it back in, then put the carbs on. Um, you can't put the motor in a bug with dual carbs on it it just won't fit but in a bus we got plenty of room we don't really need to pull it to do it if we did you just pull the apron off they slide right out if you're a bus person you know that already um, but you can you can get them in there with the carbs on it so one more reason to drive a bus <laughs> uh, so alright we're gonna get in here tear it apart we're gonna save everything we take off uh, because this is a everything works so it's good to be able to put it back to stock and it's B, this motor is going into the bug when the bug comes out of the paint shop um, because eventually that big two liter is going to get stuffed in here. Um, so for now, we're just borrowing this motor because the rag top is in paint. Uh, this is gonna go back to the stock configuration when it goes in there, so we'll get to that a different day. So uh, let me, the parts that are gonna be getting put on here. Um, everything you want to make sure you have before you start this because it sucks to get started and realize you're missing one gasket or one block off plate. That sucks. So let me show you everything you need. I'll put links to down below uh, everything you need. So let's do that. All right. So what we've got here is almost everything that you would get in a kit. Um, and then more because some of the stuff that you need doesn't come in the kit. Ooh, intake gaskets uh, fuel filter obviously we talked about that heat riser gasket heat riser block off plates I was super lucky I found all this stuff in my drawer the miscellaneous parts um, I can never find these stupid things when I need them and I found them today so you got a left and a right and a brand new gasket underneath just to make sure it all seals up you don't want any leaks and then uh, you'll need a bunch of fuel line. Uh, there's just a special order in how you have to do it uh, to get it all to come out easily. Um, but I will show you that order very carefully uh, when we jump in there and, and get to tearing it apart. So let's move the camera and uh, we will show you what, uh, what you need to do. All right, so first thing, what I like to do is I like to start outside the motor and uh, work my way back just to make sure that I get everything off you know in the right order so we're gonna take our not standard <laughs> wrench if you've got good enough compression uh, you should be able to just give that a pop and uh, those come off you know you want them to be snug but you don't need them to be super duper tight 
Uh, that's how you bend stuff. So keep track of how many shims come off. Um, I'm putting the same belt and everything back in there. So uh, we want to make sure we get the tension correct. This is an older German style pulley with the, uh, the two prongs in it. I highly recommend that you get that. Uh, because they don't slip the chrome You know super fancy made in China ones that you get for real cheap at the swap meet um, They slip because they don't have anything holding the two halves together, but a you know an odd shaped center so These little fingers go in those little fingers not gonna slip uh, Be careful when you take this off too because if you pull the whole thing off There's a little woodruff key here that'll fall out um, I don't need this to be in two pieces for the rest of this job, so I'm going to put it back together the way I found it. It's the best way to not lose parts, um, is to just put stuff back together. All we needed to do was get the belt off, because we're going to have to pull the alternator out. Um, uh, I guess the next thing we could do is... Easy. extras and uh, we'll need oh, yeah. oh I can do the heat risers oh boy there it is sometimes these can be stuck on just because they're heat cycled a bunch uh, I'll just take it easy and you know you can heat them up again you can run the motor for a minute and that sometimes will work um, i'm not going to show you the whole thing in real time because it's going to take hours and hours but i'll show you just how to get basically the order so once you get these off these are where those block off plates go um, but there's covers and washers don't lose any of this stuff like a million little screws and I think I might have to take that breastplate off in fact I know I will okay so anyways these will come off uh, and then once this is loose you got to do the ones on the sides pull those off uh, the next thing I pull off is the distributor which will give you access to the fuel pump I don't disconnect the hoses on the fuel pump uh, right away unless they're in the way um, if you use that fancy little tool, maybe Mitch will buy you one too. <laughs> Mine just showed up in the mail one day. It was pretty great. Um, these make it real easy to, on the back side, it pops right down in there. And, you know, you can easily get them out. Um, so, distributor comes off so you can get access to the back of that. Fuel pump comes off. Um, then you take your fuel pump pliers pinch off the fuel line so you can get that out of the way you want to pinch off this fuel line coming from the tank um, and I tend to try to pinch it not in the middle just in case it does cause an issue um, I have a lot of slack and you can cut a little bit off the end so I try to pinch it close to the end just in case if I have to cut it I don't have to replace the whole piece uh, so this will come out you got to take the carb off so you got to take the air cleaner off Take the carb off, you gotta disconnect the fuel line. This is a hot wire to the choke, so make sure you wrap that in some tape when you unplug it. Alternator wire's gotta come off. Don't touch them with your wrench. <laughs> you get shocked. Um, tape those up, because i am got my lights going. I don't wanna disconnect the battery, so I'm gonna tape the two wires there. Keep track of where all the wires go to, um, if you're the type of person that would get confused by wires like me. And once you get all that loose and you've got the the corner pieces loose on the intake and these loose uh, That should be able to slide over You can get the four bolts off the backing plate for the alternator loose And the little band back here And uh, you should be able to get this loose without taking that off at least loose sometimes you can get it off if you if you ask it nicely uh, sometimes you do end up having to take that off Which is not a big deal because with all this stuff gone you can reach back there with a socket and an extension 
And then once everything's off, and you've got this thing out of the way, then we start putting stuff back together. And then uh, when we get to that part, I will show you uh, a little more detail how everything goes back together. So here we go into hyper mode. Um, so you can watch me try to get this thing apart. 